This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. After months of negotiations, Democrats are facing a pivotal week that could decide the future of President Biden's domestic agenda. Biden met with West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin and Majority Leader Chuck Schumer at Biden's Delaware home Sunday, in attempt to advance the stalled reconciliation package that Manchin and fellow conservative Democrat Kirsten Sinema have been obstructing. The proposed price tag on the Build Back Better Act, which would vastly expand the social safety net and combat the climate crisis, has already been slashed in half to $1.75 trillion, though the final cost is still being negotiated. Manchin reportedly agreed to some proposals on new taxes for corporations and billionaires, though no deal was announced following the meeting. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said on CNN Sunday, Democrats are close to finalizing the measure, and the House is expected to vote on the bipartisan infrastructure bill later this week. We have 90 percent of the bill agreed to and written. We just have some of the last uh, decisions to be made. Uh, it is less than we had uh, was projected to begin with, but it's still bigger than anything we have ever done in, the, in, in terms of addressing the needs of America's working families. Progressive Democrats have worked to defend key provisions in Biden's infrastructure bill, like guaranteed paid family leave, which will reportedly be dropped from the proposal or cut from 12 weeks to just four weeks. On Saturday, Senator Bernie Sanders pushed back on reporting about cuts to an expansion of Medicare benefits, tweeting, the expansion of Medicare to cover dental, hearing and vision is supported by 84 percent of the public as one of the most important provisions in Build Back Better. It's what the American people want, and after waiting over 50 years, what they're going to get, Sanders added. It's not coming out. For more on what could be final negotiations, we're joined in Washington, D.C., by Congressmember Ro Khanna of California. Congressmember Khanna, welcome back to Democracy Now! Um, it's a lot of numbers being thrown around. But let's talk about the specific measures. For example, the last one, adding the vision, hearing, um, vision and hearing um, uh, and uh, dentists and, and, uh, and dental care to Medicare. Explain what exactly is being proposed and what are the cuts here. Amy, Senator Sanders is absolutely right. This is actually the most popular part of the Build Back Better agenda. That's not an opinion. It's a fact if you look at the polling. And it's not coming out. Uh, we will push very hard to make sure it stays in. The uh, it, It's quite clear what it is. I mean, seniors right now have to pay thousands of dollars to get dental care. They can't afford to get hearing aids, and that comes out of pocket. They can't afford often uh, the vision uh, eyeglasses or things that they need to take care of their eyes. Uh, that none of that is covered. And under Senator Sanders' plan, it would be covered. Now, the details are being negotiated, but I uh, know that this is a, a top priority for the senator, and it's a top priority for House progressives. And let's talk about paid family leave. Right now, not guaranteed at all. The proposal was for 12 weeks. Uh, it's now apparently been cut to four weeks, but could be actually nothing. Who is arguing that a person who gives birth should be back at work within a few weeks, if not the next day? I don't know. Obviously, someone who is uh, doesn't know anyone who's given birth. I mean, I, it's absurd to have it at four weeks. I mean, even, Amy, as you know, the Family Medical Leave Act allows six weeks. Now, that's unpaid, but that even that act, which passed under the Clinton heirs, allows for six weeks. So you would think at minimum we would cover six weeks. This is an area, again, where progressives are pushing very hard. We're saying do the 12 weeks, do what every other wealthy democracy, uh, a wealthy nation does, every other OECD country does. If you want to compromise on the number of years of the program, fine, we can compromise on that, but have a proper precedent in what should be paid parental leave, paid family leave. So, can you talk about 
the climate aspects of this bill. I know you're going to be holding congressional hearings. President Biden says he wants these bills signed off on before he leaves for Glasgow, uh, the U.N. climate summit that's taking place there next week. We need to do this, in my view, before the president goes to Glasgow, to give him something uh, to show American leadership. Uh, but if we're going to remove the uh, climate uh, energy program, that is the robust program of mandates and incentives uh, to get us to 50 percent reduction by 2030, that's the president goal, president's goal. If we're going to remove that, we have to have an alternative to hit the president's goal. That is ongoing, that negotiation. Several ideas have been proposed, block grants to states, uh, penalties for industrial polluters. So we have to look at what the package is. I, uh, I know, though, that the Progressive Caucus has made it very, very clear. Jared Huffman, in particular, has been a great leader on this in saying we have to have the president's 50 percent targets met. So talk about how these negotiations are going. You have uh, Senator Manchin uh, criticizing President Sanders' vision of America as an entitlement society. But, in fact, is this really an ideological difference? Uh, the West Virginia senator uh, making a fortune himself, founding coal companies in the 80s, his money now in a blind trust, his brothers and his son are all involved in that, the largest recipient of oil, coal and gas money of the U.S. Senate. Is this purely about his own enrichment? that he is objecting to renewable energy, for example? I wouldn't characterize it in that, uh, those terms, but I would say that it's a philosophical debate. I mean, when you look at—I just look at my own life and what, what did uh, America give me? I got to go to a good public school. I never had to worry about health care because my father had a, a middle-class job, but they, it had health care. I got to see a dentist because we had dental insurance. I got nutritious meals. I, I had uh, access, uh, ultimately, to a, a great uh, education and was able to now take out loans for that. I, I, I paid them off, but I was fortunate. But my question, I guess, to people is, it doesn't seem that that's asking a lot. Uh, I don't think I'm a product of an entitlement society. I think I had basic education, health and nutrition that allowed me then uh, to work and to, to make a contribution. And all Senator Sanders, all Build Back Better is saying is uh, the opportunities that I had or so many in America have had should be available to all. Uh, that, uh, to me, is a philosophical debate we're still having in this country. We're very close to getting it done, but we need to continue to make the, the, the case that investments in education and health care support productivity, support work, and aren't creating some uh, welfare state, as, as has been characterized. So what is going to happen this week? Uh, the Progressive Caucus, the largest congressional caucus, um, has said they will not support passage of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, though they're not against that bill, unless at the same time the reconciliation bill is voted on. Do you actually see that happening this week? Enormous pressure on the Congressional Progressive Caucus. On the other hand, they're the ones that are putting the most pressure uh, on keeping as much of the Build Back Better plan as possible. Possible. We will not vote for the bipartisan bill, which has almost zero climate provisions, uh, unless there is uh, an agreed upon uh, deal on the reconciliation bill. Now, there is, has to be sufficient specificity. There has to be a su sufficient understanding that it's robust on climate, that uh, Senator Sanders and the provisions he's been fighting for are in there. Uh, and I suppose if all 50 senators, including Senator Sanders and Senator Warren, uh, are convinced that it will pass uh, and are convinced that it's robust and have said that they will vote for it, uh, of course, that will influence the progressive view. And the progressives then may say, OK, we have a deal. Uh, but it's important to realize that it's not just Manchin and Cinema. Uh, there's going to have to be the, the sign off of uh, Senator Sanders, Senator Warren and and other progressives in the Senate for the Progressive Caucus to feel assured that there is a deal. 
Can you talk about the hearing that you're going to hold, um, the CEOs of six major fossil fuel companies and trade associations testifying this month, including ExxonMobil, BP, Chevron, Shell Oil, the American Petroleum Institute and the U.S. Chamber of Com uh, Commerce? Um, what do you want to know from them about their role in spreading climate disinformation, and what do you think will be accomplished by your hearing? It's a historic hearing, Amy. Uh, it's the first time these oil executives have had to come before Congress to answer for climate disinformation. The hearing is quite simple. It's first, why did you lie to the American people, uh, and why do you continue to be deceptive about talking about all the challenges that climate change uh, brings, that the climate crisis brings, but not taking action to address it. And we want to first expose that, to expose the story of past uh, misrepresentation and current uh, ongoing deception. And then we need a commitment for, from them to stop, to stop all the misinformation, because you can't solve the climate crisis if you're going to have lobbyists and public relations firms and think tanks systematically putting out misinformation about climate. You have reserved most of your animus on the um, cinema <laughs> mansion blockade of this bill for Senator Cinema of Arizona. Can you talk about your concerns about her and why you're most critical? I mean, I wouldn't say it's it's animus. It's just more bewilderment. Uh, and I guess my concern is the lack of transparency. Uh, you know, I disagree on a lot of things with Senator Manchin. But people have kind of had a sense of where he stands. And then you work and you negotiate. Uh, Senator Sinema, you know, doesn't ever do public interviews, doesn't talk to colleagues, doesn't talk to constituents. Uh, and so is operating in this sense where she just talks to the White House. And that has created a black box on what she wants, which has made it very, very difficult uh, to for the process to take place. And that is why I've had... Uh, sort of the most frustration and, and, and criticism of, of her. It's not personal in any way. It's just why is she not being more transparent? So let's talk about how the bill was going to be uh, funded and the issue of increasing taxes on corporations and billionaires and millionaires uh, and those of the wealthiest classes in this country. Um, you have 55 corporations, at least, that are paying zero taxes. What are you demanding? And what is Senator Sinema, who in the past has supported increasing taxes, now done 180 on? Well, in the past, she voted against the Trump tax cuts. The Build Back Better bill would not even raise the tax rates back to where they were prior to the Trump tax cuts. They would just marginally raise the corporate tax rates and the taxes on, on the wealthy, and Senator Sinema is opposed to that. But I understand that uh, Senator Warren has, is prevailing on this idea of a wealth tax, which I support. Uh, and if we're going to have a wealth tax on the billionaires, uh, that's a good first step. And I understand that she's also uh, managed to prevail on this view that uh, every corporation should pay tax. I mean, it sounds silly to even say it, but right now you have over 50 companies, many very wealthy companies that pay zero tax, and I support that. So if we could get these provisions of a wealth tax, which frankly is even more progressive in my view than uh, raising corporate tax rates, uh, and a corporate minimum tax, uh, and if that gets to the revenue we need, uh, I'm open to that approach. Uh, and then we still, in my view, need to raise the corporate tax rates and raise the tax rates on, uh, on the wealthy. And maybe we could do that in a subsequent bill. It's bewildering to me why Senator Sinema is opposed to that. Uh, but I'm for these other alternatives that are being floated.